Beneath the ground, unseen streams flow. After rain you can hear them. Waters rising through the sands and gravels to the south run down and unite hereabouts. The knowledge of this fact creates a sense of depth, of dimension. Are these natural features now engineered into the city's frame, the hermetic tail end of what was formerly common knowledge, a residue from better times now known only to the elect? Me? I don't know. It's very difficult to say. I think the the, the, the day favourite day filming, I think, was the, was the when Nick and Will did walk together. I think that was when it started to feel like a film. And so that was it was a bit of a thrill. Because I think you know it's a bit you you might have read as well like read about Will walking. You know, he's read those accounts of it. So to actually go along on one was one thing, and to film it was another thing. And also what we got out of that day. As well, so it was only an hour. It was only an hour. I think I ran off about an hour and a bit, and we used about I don't know, ten, uh, sort of about five minutes in the film, which is not a bad ratio. So it was, uh, it was quite. That was a good day. That was, that was probably the favourite bit about cheap filming, I think. And the day over at Mogden was that was beautiful. That was a good day, wasn't it? Yeah, we we went to Mogden purification works and then to. Um, to uh, Bronzefield Prison in Ashford, which was the site of Ashford Command. I just had an operation on my knee and could barely walk. It was still all swollen and had a crutch with me. <laughs> trying to <laughs> film and walk. Oh, but it was a good day. I didn't day. care at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be on didn't. camera. Just talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, come on, John, hurry up. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> it? There are a lot of people that have made films and made, they've never had those experiences where the subject becomes going, come on, are you going to film me or what? <laughs> and you're clearly changing tape or something or, you know, you're, or you're getting a, a landscape shot. Well, come on. <laughs> Some of the best footage for me in the film was uh, uh, down, I, I arranged to meet John at Stonebridge Park at uh, one o'clock one afternoon and uh, I... He hadn't turned up by about ten past one, so I phoned him, and he hadn't actually left Camden Town yet. Oh, no, he had to go to Camden Town. It was, to get quite, to it was five o'clock, yeah, and then you went off walking somewhere else. Yeah, I went off following a, a stream that joins the Brent. Uh, down it was another one of those things where I was actually doing something else. I'm paid, to do. and <laughs> so I said, I can't come now. I'll come as quickly as I can. So I can get back to the office to get the camera before the office shut, and uh, they have a chance time to recharge the batteries or anything like that, just grab it, hope there was a tape in the bag, <laughs> and there was, and then the, uh, the warp ended in front of the Hoover factory and the battery ran out, <laughs> so Nick was talking in front of the Hoover ba factory, everything on, lovely shot, I had about a second of it. <laughs> and, and I was a bit frustrated, and, uh, and yet the limitations that were imposed in terms of filming time seemed to work in our favour. They, 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 they placed constraints and we had to be really efficient, didn't we? Mm. And a lot of the shots where I'm talking about my past and how the landscape has become an ally and uh, that sort of thing were taken on that day. So I mean, one of my things is I like rummaging around in sort of skips and finding old documents. And uh, I did actually used to uh, burgle empty houses, not places where people live, places that have been derelict for a long time in the 1980s sort of Rajinsky was room sort of thing and bring out old letters and things and uh, one of the things I like to do was I might find an old letter in North Finchley that had actually originally been delivered to a house in Ealing say and I'd go down to Ealing and just sort of look at this house and look at this letter and think this letter arrived at this house in 1936 you know and it, it felt like a kind of way in to something that was quite powerful although yeah. what the people who lived there thought I don't know when they looked out the window <laughs> <laughs> holding a letter in there, yeah. did you ever deliver them? <laughs> <laughs> I, was tempted, I was tempted to sort of just leave one on a, on a doorstep yeah. and sort of stuff like that sort of trigger a kind of spontaneous time travel experience <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do a biography, uh, autobiography next to get that out of the way because uh, I, I was addicted to dihydrocodeine for 20 years and uh, I used to buy uh, codeine linctus from chemists. I used to travel all over Middlesex visiting um, towns, uh, hitting the chemists to buy codeine linctus. It used to um, 
affect what I thought of places. So, for instance, if I went to Shepparton and they didn't sell me any codeine linkers, I'd sort of say to my friends, Shepparton, that place is a fucking shithole. <laughs> you know, but what it meant was the chemist wouldn't sell me any codeine linkers. So I'd like to sort of fuse that sort of addiction story, great backstory, with some kind of topography. You still do that, don't you? Well, like even, uh, I met you at Lower Marsh once, and you said, oh, I really like Lower Marsh. And I thought of all the sort of deep topographic reasons why you might be attracted to Lower Marsh, is that street, the market behind Waterloo Station. Oh, yeah, I like it too, Nick. I was about to get all kind of poncy about it, and you went, yeah, there's a chemist down here, and he used to sell me loads of codeine. <laughs> 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 I used to get really whacked to sit in that park over there. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, it seemed like it was a real personal thing to you, this, this project that you've been on for the last 20 odd years. How do you feel now that the film's been made and do you think there's any danger of doing to deep, deep topography what Sinclair himself have done to psychogeography? It's interesting you say 20 years, it's almost 20 years to the day. It was July uh, 1989 that I, if you like, first consciously walked, if you like. I, I just finished a uh, uh, a training, a, a treat, an addiction treatment centre in Kent, and uh, it had gone wrong, and I'd been uh, thrown out basically. I was in uh, quite a lot of pain, and I found a uh, London Transport walking book from 1976, and did a walk from uh, Amersham to uh, Rickmansworth uh, via Latimer on on the uh, Chess Valley, and uh, that was the first time I consciously walked, and. Uh, I found something strange happened to me when I walked. Put it this way, I'm sure I'm not the only person it happens to, but when I sort of read the Ramblers Association magazine, and to some extent when I read old topographies, they don't seem to write about the same magnitude of experience. It's possible that the way I experience the landscape has been refracted through uh, certain modern sensibilities and, and vast amounts of magic mushrooms that I took when I was a teenager. <laughs> And that's kind of affected, you know, we're a rock and roll electronic generation, whether we like it or not, we see the world slightly differently. Um, possibly an element of bigging myself up as well. I don't know what deep topography is, and I've got to say that uh, uh, Tina Richardson, a student at Leeds University, wrote an essay about me and has started calling it deep topology. <laughs> and, uh, I'm wondering if I shouldn't do a Sinclair and say I'm a fully signed up sort of <laughs> member of this deep topology and I don't use that hackneyed term deep topography anymore. <laughs> <laughs> on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the good for Tina Richardson. And um, it's always been years ago when I was walking, a friend used to say you ought to write a book about this. And I felt that I, I was so... Um, hurt, if I can get a bit personal, I was so hurt and so going off licking my wounds, I didn't want to bring this world back into the arena of the culture for it to be kind of chatted about and all the rest of it. Um, and yet it's um, it's very tantalising to um, be in a film, to appear in public and to talk about it that like I'm doing right at this moment. And I suppose in a sense you could see it as the corruption is starting at this stage. It's an uneasy thing for me. It's an uneasy thing for me. But, you know, it's again it's that contradiction, you know, I'd like I'd like to be uh subject of a South Bank show. You know. I'd like to be sort of like part of the culture as the man who's totally uninterested in being part of the culture. I'm a bit of a wanker with this stuff. <laughs> it's like you can't it's like it's like something out of sort of um uh, Derrida or something, you know, uh, deconstruction. It's like you, it's almost like it so impinges on the way we think that you can't twist out of it. Yeah. Well, you twist out of it, and then I'm going to write about how I twisted <laughs> out of it, you know, and you're back in again. But you are quite. It's interesting you say we have this, because we have these conversations weekly <laughs> and uh, every day. Yeah, every. <laughs> and what's interesting is Nick, Nick takes it and I completely sympathise with him and empathise with him, but then he is part of the culture because. You know, there'd be people in the bookshop here, I'm sure, that go, you say, Nick, Nick Pastimitri, people go, oh, I've heard of him. Because, you know, like, Will's written about you, so you're in Will's work, right? So straight away, you're, you're in, you, Ian's mentioned you on Radio 4, I've heard Ian since they mentioned you on Radio 4 twice. He mentioned you at a screening at the other cinema, not the other cinema, the Renoir. Did talk about you for about three or four minutes, and, and Russell used to do a character partly based on you as well. And you, were, you were mentioned twice on Russell's radio show, you know. So you sort of have permeated the culture in a way that most people never do, you know. <laughs> Doomed. Yeah. I failed in my project. <laughs> <laughs>